Stefan and Cole have been talking about some really cool stuff um, to do with voice, but what do you do when you get given a text, a piece of text, and you need to work out what it does? So I'm going to talk about um, a project that we have been working on. So um, the scenario is that we're, uh, we're trying to build a business intelligence system that would allow the user to just type in free text and then um, inter interpret this free text and then query for the right data and present it back to the user. Um, some of the challenges we have to, uh, well, some of the constraints that we actually have to adhere to in this project was that we needed to understand business language domain. There was a lot of business language specific and we, and most of the NLP tools out there did not cater for that, so we had had to write our own. Um, another thing is that we could not store or send user questions off-site because all of these are very sensitive um, data. So what did we do? Um, so we looked at a bunch of tools out there. We knew that we would have to do some natural language processing. So we looked at all the natural language, well, some of the main natural language processing tools out there. So NLTK is a Python um, library. Uh, we looked at Spacey, another Python library for natural language processing, and Stanford Core NLP, which is a Java one. Um, all three are very good. They all offer the very similar sets of features. But um, we ended up picking Spacey because um, Spacey, well, it's also mentioned as one of the flip as well. So Spacey offers most of the NLP features um, out there and it's designed for development teams. This is very important for us because um, we needed to be up and running very quickly and um, other libraries such as NLTK are very much geared towards academic. So it's like a framework where we can switch in and switch out algorithms or resources and you know being a development team you do not have time to start searching for the best algorithms to use so what spacey gives you is the well the uh, creative spacey has actually um, baked in their opinion of what's the best lemmatizer out there what's the best stemming um, engine out there and they just bake it into spacey for you so um, that then saves us from having to do all the headache of picking which one and Spacey actually has really good performance and accuracy. I think it was uh, dubbed as the fastest NLP tool out there in the world. I think back in 2015, not sure about it now. Um, it also offers a really good set of APIs. So as a developer, the, best, the first thing you would go to in a new tool is APIs. It's got really good um, documentations and it's very actively supported and um, it's evolving quite quickly as well. The other key thing for us was that we wanted to eventually integrate with deep learning. So we would start with um, rule-based NLP, uh, NLP, but then eventually we might want to integrate with deep learning. And Spacey actually makes that very easy for you. So I'll talk a more, more about that in the second slide. So um, I, as I mentioned, what is Spacey? So most of the NLP features that it actually gives you are very common and very uh, very useful, most of the ones that you would need. The key thing, integration with deep learning, is that you um, can actually plug in multiple deep learning libraries, um, depending on your choice. Um, Spacey gives you that uh, flexibility. And um, to use Spacey, all you have to do is create a pipeline, and you say, for this, uh, this text, I want it to go through um, uh, tokenizer, Seg uh, sentence segmentation and name entity recognizer and um, say for example an, a sentiment analysis uh, engine as well. So you just define the pipeline and whatever text that comes in will go through this pipeline. And with your deep learning you can write your own and plug it in. It's got a callback for you to, uh, to integrate it. Okay, so um, so after using Spacey for a while, um, this is our experience in uh, using it. So first of all, um, we had to use a lot of, um, as I mentioned before, um, business domain language. So that means we had to write our own custom entity matcher, and we had thousands and thousands. And Spacey performed really well. Um, we had no uh, performance issue at all. Um, it's great at processing well-structured language. So a document would pass through really quickly and, it's doing, uh, and it gets passed and tagged really well. But um, if you have um, free text that's not grammatically correct, Spacey will fail. So um, in this case, you are better off using like a string matching library. I'll talk about it in more detail in a minute. 
So the other things that Spacey doesn't do that you may want to watch out for before you pick Spacey is that it only supports English, German, and French right now. It's got some other languages in the pipeline, but it's, not, it's still in beta. Um, it doesn't do stemming. This is because the Spacey creator has a very strong opinion around stemming, and that he prefers um, lemmatization instead. Uh, it doesn't do co-reference resolution. Um, I don't know why. There's, I don't know whether, if there's a reason why, but we didn't need to use it, so we didn't miss it. Okay, so um, talking about string and matching. So this is the end of Spacey. Any questions? No. Okay. So um, the other thing that we needed to use for our um, search engine was that when user type in something that's ambiguous, that matches multiple words, or, that, uh, or they misspell something, then we need to correct it, and we need to do approximate matching. And this is why we use um, Fuzzy Wuzzy. Although the name is a bit funny, but it's actually a really good library. And um, it uses um, Levenstein distance. Does anyone know what Levenstein distance is? <laughs> no. OK, so basically, it's just the number of uh, changes you would na need to make to one string to make it uh, match the other string. So say, for example, if I, if I have the string cake and take, then the Levenstein distance between um, cake and take is one, because I need to change the T for the C. OK, so basically, that's the basis of it. And it's used for um, approximate matching of short string, um, spell check, and typo correction. Um, it, so when you call the API, it gives you a, a score. So you, you uh, give it a text. Uh, and the, you predefine the list of texts that need to match to, and then it will say to you, it'll, uh, this text is matching these other list of texts at um, 90%, 80%, and then you can use that to rank your um, clarification. Okay, so um, that's all I have so far. Any questions? I'll hand it over to Kevin.